Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython Weekly for May 1st, 2023. It's the time of week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jepler, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold this meeting in the CircuitPython Dev Text channel and the CircuitPython Voice channel. The meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with a U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your favorite calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. To receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. If you're watching it after the fact, the link is in the notes. And we'll include timestamps to go with the video so you can skip to the part that interests you the most. Uh, after each meeting, we post a link for the next meeting's notes to the CircuitPython Dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. You can find that in the pinned messages and add your notes at any time during the upcoming week. And of course, if you wish, wish to participate but can't attend, don't have a mic, or for any reason don't want to speak, you can leave your hug reports and status updates in the document for us to read during the meeting. This meeting is held in five parts. Next up is community news, where we take a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a preview of our Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. And I will preview the preview and say this is like a MicroPython heavy newsletter. So much good stuff in there. Anyway, next up after that, we're going to talk about CircuitPython with the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a quantitative overview of the entire project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. And then third up is the first participatory section called Hug Reports. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the folks, the good things folks are doing, taking the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Then, status updates, a second round robin that gives you the opportunity to report on what you've been up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've done in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week. And if you don't make it every week, we're happy to hear uh, over a larger period of time, but do keep it to a reasonable length. And then the final part, if we need it, is called In the Weeds. In the Weeds is the section where we uh, do any more long-form discussions. These can be uh, items that we identify during status updates because a discussion started up, or something that you've identified ahead of time uh, that you're sure is too long. And that covers how the meeting will go. Next up is community news. Uh, this and more is available in our weekly Python for Microcontrollers newsletter, which goes out via email on Tuesday mornings. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to the newsletter. Uh, thank you, Anne, for putting the newsletter together. If you are out there, anyone in the world, you have Python on hardware news, projects to share, or find any content that you think is worthy of being included, please consider contributing it to the newsletter, which we really uh, want to view as a community-run effort. You can open a PR on GitHub, uh, tweet at an engineer on Twitter with the hashtag CircuitPython, or email cpnews at adafruit.com with a link. And Anne says it is her pleasure, along with the attendant blood, sweat, and tears. All right. So, from the newsletter, here are some of the headlines. MicroPython version 1.20.0 has been released, and it contains a wide array of improvements and fixes. Um, more MicroPython news. Check out the links for all the release notes, such as uh, that they have Raspberry Pi Pico W support now. Next up, MicroPython is celebrating 10 years, and in the newsletter there will be a poster, The Evolution of MicroPython, as well as some other visualizations of the development of MicroPython over time. Uh, all right, it's not all MicroPython, because we released CircuitPython 8.1.0 Beta 2. It is a beta release for uh, CircuitPython 8.1, and it is now on GitHub and CircuitPython.org. We always value your testing with beta releases, Things are, may not be complete, there may be bugs, we need to hear about the bugs so that we can fix them. So check it out and then give us feedback. All right, one project 
It is a MicroPython project. It is a traffic light simulation running on the Pimeroni Cosmic Unicorn LED display. One simulates red, yellow, green lights, and one simulates a whole intersection. And there is a Twitter thread as well as full source on GitHub. So I kind of covered this before, but uh, the CircuitPython weekly newsletter is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. And the place to sign up to receive that in your email box every week is the front pr front page of adafruitdaily.com. We highlight the latest Python and hardware related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. And once again, we want you to contribute your own news or project. You can do that in a variety of ways, such as editing the draft on GitHub and submitting a pull request with the changes. You can also tag your tweets or your toots with hashtag CircuitPython or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And that wraps up the newsletter and brings us to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And this report contains information from the previous seven days. Uh, the report is generated sometime overnight, so any changes today are not included in the report. And of course, because we're generating this uh, based on GitHub API requests, sometimes stuff just gets lost. And uh, we really appreciate your contribution, even if we fail to acknowledge it here. So. Overall, we had a large number of pull requests merged, 49 from possibly a record 37 authors. Uh, so those include Sebastian Falk, Ross K1, Chris Papalardo, a word for that, Patino, Matt Land, and Julian Clulo, among others. Uh, I know that many of these people, uh, Katni will tell us more about it in a bit, were participating with us on the CircuitPython sprints at PyCon this past week. So thank you to all those 37 authors. We also had 10 reviewers who are looking at those pull requests to make sure that they uh, meet our high quality um, goals and helping people win their pull request isn't quite at that point yet to uh, get things to that point. And there's a name on here I don't recognize, KVC0 on GitHub. Thanks for your uh, pull request review as well as a bunch of the regular people. Issues-wise, we uh, saw 48 closed issues by 13 people and 16 opened by 16 people. So again, a high level of participation. Many of those closed issues were because of those 49 pull requests. So yeah, thank you everybody. And I'm just tremendously excited at uh, what y'all got up to this past week, especially during the CircuitPython sprints. And now Dan has agreed to tell us what is going on in the core of CircuitPython. Okay, thanks. So over the last week, we had 17 pull requests merged. There were 18 authors. Not sure how there are 18 authors and there were 17 pull requests, but that's all right. Um, and four reviewers and a couple of uh, new ones. I, Chen Ji Zhao, I didn't recognize. Mr. MJ Sir 901 and some of the other ones you also mentioned, KVC0. So right now we have 23 open pull requests. Many of these have to do with boards and our drafts and our being are stuck for one reason or another. Some of them were drafts because they were awaiting other work. Um, in the last week, 14 issues were closed by five people and nine opened by nine people. That's nice. There are now 631 open issues. Um, there are no open issues for the eight for the 80x milestone, so we're not planning any release past 805 right now. Um, there are eight open issues for the 810 release. There are 26 for 8xx, things that we kind of like to fix before 900. Um, and uh, there are 900, there are 26 issues for 900, and those are things that need to wait until 900 or can wait uh, because maybe they're incompatible. There are 21 issues that have to do with libraries, and there are 538 issues designated as long term. Eight are designated as support because it's not obvious that they that they represent a bug. Um, and there are six issues that are kind of uh, stuck because of third party issues. And there are four issues that were not assigned a milestone at the time this was listed. I just um, triage those. So there aren't zero, there are zero right now. And that's it for the core. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, that's it. 
All right, thanks, Dan. Um, I happen to know about GitHub that there can be multiple authors on one pull request. So for instance, uh, a WebLate pull request is a great example of that. There's WebLate itself, which created the pull request, and then there are all the individual people who wrote the translations. And so those are all listed within the uh, notes. So that's how you can have more authors than pull requests. But now I will hand it off to Katni to talk about the libraries. Hello. Hey. So this section applies to uh, all of the CircuitPython libraries. That's everything in the CircuitPython community bundle, as well as the Adafruit CircuitPython bundle, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore and a couple of extras. Across all those repositories, we had 31 pull requests merged by 22 authors. And a number of these folks are brand new. Um, I highlighted them above, so, so Jeff's already, already called them out, but um, we had a, a lot of uh, engagement at the sprints this year at PyCon 2023, um, and it's showing through here. Uh, we'll put together some actual metrics in probably a week or so because there are still folks working on some of their PRs, which is excellent for multiple reasons. Um, and uh, I want to make sure we include, you know, kind of everything that, that came out of it before we start putting together numbers. Uh, and we had eight reviewers. In terms of the merged pull requests, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six of them were 18 days or older. The oldest one being almost 70, which is excellent. Um, I'm glad we're also getting through older PRs. Um, and we had quite a few that were uh, four, three, two, or one days or zero. We don't put zero days in here, but... Um, Thanks uh, specifically to, um, and I have a hug report later for this as well, to Tectric and Foamy Guy, especially Foamy Guy for doing a lot of the reviews on the Sprint PRs. And that leaves us with 63 open pull requests. We had 33 issues closed by 10 people, seven opened by seven people. So we're very much down and that's definitely coming out of the uh, sprints this year. Um, leaving us with 595 open issues and 59 of those are good first issues. I believe we were at uh 70 or 75 or six or maybe i don't remember exactly but we were we were much higher than that um and most of the prs that came out of um the sprints were were pulled from that list uh, if you're interested in contributing to circuit python on the python side of things check out circuitpython.org contributing uh, you'll find all of this information and more including open pull requests uh, listed out and a list of open issues um if you're interested in reviewing, check out the open PRs. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, check out the code, see if it looks right to you. If you find any issues, leave a comment and let us know. And once you're comfortable with doing that, we can talk about leveling you up to the review team. If you're interested in contributing code or documentation, check out the open issues. If you're new to everything, good first issue is a great place to start. Um, you can uh, sort by label or you can just do a search in page for, for a term that maybe interests you, but find something that uh, you find interesting, uh, leave a comment that you're working on it. And uh, if you're new to everything, there's a uh, guide uh, written for contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, uh, which walks you through all the steps. And we're always available on Discord to help you out. You can also request help on the GitHub issue itself. Um, in terms of library PyPI weekly download stats, uh, this past week, over 310 libraries, we had 100,545 PyPI downloads, and there's a list of the top 10 in, um, in the notes. I will note that uh, from the top 10, eight of them are over 1,000 downloads, which is actually kind of unusual, so there's been some, some excitement, I suppose, happening. Um, and then library updates over the last seven days. We had uh, one new library from uh, Jose David, which is CircuitPython Slider, and a number of updated libraries that I will not read off individually. And that's where we are with the libraries. Thank you, Kenny. And I believe you're also reading us the Blinka section today. I am. So Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. And over the last week, there was one pull request merged by one author and one reviewer. There are six open pull requests at this time. There was one closed issue by one person and zero open by zero people, leaving 96 open issues. Uh, in terms of PyPI downloads in the last week, there were 13,009 
high wheels downloads in the last month were 13,716. And finally, the number of currently supported boards is 101. All right. Thank you, Katni. That wraps up status updates, and we are ready to head on to Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, and then we'll go down the list in the document order to give everybody a chance to participate. If you're text only or are missing the meeting, I'll read your notes when I get to them in the list. All right. So I just want to start off with a group hug. I've been out for about three weeks, and I miss you all but it was also nice to have a break. Um, my PyCon hugs include a huge number of people in no particular order. Kara Willing, Mariotta, uh, Ned, who is at NedBat, Brainwain, Timid Robot, and scads of other people I met and talked to, as well as everyone at the sprints and open spaces. Uh, especially uh, some additional hugs for Tectric, Keith the EE, Crayola, and of course Katni for running excellent sprints and open spaces. And finally, to Lamore and PT for funding my attendance at PyCon this year. And then I have some notes from C. Grover, who has a group hug to the team and community, and a, a hug report to Tectric for their last pull request. Congratulations. I think we'll be hearing more about that later in the meeting. But next up is Dan. Okay, so uh, thanks. Again, repeated several times, thanks to Katni and you and Tectric, Crayola, and Keith E.E. for being our presence at PyCon. And thanks to Anecdote and Foamy Guy, who've been doing a lot of testing of PRs and issues related to network stuff in um, the core and various libraries, especially the HTTP server. It really is incredibly helpful to have other people test this stuff thoroughly. It saves us time, the core developers time, instead of having to set everything up to test and other people have more experience with this stuff and that's very helpful. Okay. All right, next is DJ Devon three. Hello. Hello. Hey, got my mic working this week. Uh, I would like to send a hug to Skur, Mad Bodger, Crazy Guy, S2O, and Xerxes third for all the advice in designing a workshop lamp PCB out of NeoPixels and instead of ordering five 19 inch large ring PCBs uh, they came up with the idea to split one into 72 degrees which one times five is 360 uh, so that saved me a lot of money and that was a really neat project well done everyone uh, for the group effort that was really cool um, a hug to Andy War Warburton for helping beta test Wi-Fi, MQTT, and I2C on the UN Feather S2 and S3. Or, I guess the S2, I did the S3. Um, a hug to Dan for helping with M ugh, mini MQTT error handling issue. It was user error as usual. A hug to Naradoc for helping me figure out how to download a weather gif from NOAA using the Adafruit request library. And... A hug to Katni, Jepler, KTE, and Tetric, and everyone who participated at PyCon this year. Thank you. And next up is Foamy Guy. Hello. All right. Uh, how's it going, Jeff? Thank you. Um, echoing uh, what a couple of folks have said, uh, thank you to Katni, Crayola, uh, to you, Jeff, to Tetric, and Keith the EE, as well as anybody else who was out at PyCon representing CircuitPython or even just hanging around and helping the uh, the new contributors who popped up. Um, speaking of, uh, thank you to all of our new or less frequent contributors who made their first contributions or uh, first contribution in a while um, over PyCon. Had lots of uh, new folks pop in. It's been really amazing to see. Uh, thank you to uh, Tectric and Jose David for helping review the influx of those uh, PRs. And then uh, lastly, thank you to uh, Michael Pocusa, who has submitted a uh, proposal for a new version of HTTP server. Uh, this person also put some uh, improvements into HTTP server last week, but there's a new PR open with a new version that has lots of new features uh, that are commonly supported by other uh, platforms, other HTTP servers on other platforms. So it's really cool to see the evolution of, uh, of that library. Um, and that's what I have for now. Thanks. All righty. Next, I have notes from Jose David, who writes a hug for Fummy Guy and Tectric for all the last week PR reviews. And with that, we come to Ketney, and then I'll have a bunch of folks to read out notes for. 
All right. Uh, so first up, hugs to all the folks I caught up with or met at PyCon. Uh, some of those folks, Marietta, Carol Willing, Chalmer, Tyson, Toshio, Nicholas Tolervy, Jeff and Ingrid, Alec, Keith and Sarah, Timid Robot, Russell, Paul, Shauna, Emily, and so many more. Um, I needed to write the rest of my hug reports or I would have attempted to list everyone. Uh, special hugs to Jeff, Alec, Keith the EE, and Crayola for helping out with hosting open spaces and sprints. To Sean Tibor for accepting my education summit talk and helping out during uh, Saturday's open space. To Alec and Rose for helping out with prep before PyCon. To everyone who attended the open spaces and wanted to learn about CircuitPython during uh, PyCon 2023. To everyone who attended the sprints and contributed to the CircuitPython project in so many ways. Uh, to the folks who submitted their examples uh, that came out of the open spaces to my uh, PyCon 2023 content repo, I always include an attendee examples folder, and I think at least three people submitted the um, examples that they came up with uh, during the open spaces. Uh, to Foamy Guy and Tectric for all the PR reviews and help provided to our new contributors. I'm not super familiar with type hinting, and those were the good first issues that we tagged, and folks were really into doing them, um, but I was not really the person to be able to provide uh, answers to a lot of the questions they had, and and uh, Foamy Guy especially was available to reply on issues and reply on Discord and uh, help out and uh, keep things running smoothly. Um, to Phil and Lamore for sponsoring me to attend PyCon. Uh, to Dave and Mike for bringing me on to the organization team for Pi Ohio this year and moving forward. To Rose for all her support before and throughout PyCon. To C. Grover and Foamy Guy for adapting and updating their code for my PyCon badge. Specifically, C. Grover uh, updated um, his uh, thermal camera code to a much more lightweight version that uh, had only the features I needed um, so I could have a thermal camera example on it. And to Foamy Guy for the badge code, including the ability to connect or to control the NeoPixel LEDs over Wi Fi and uh, the snake game that was on there and the ability to switch between all three. To the folks who organized PyCon 2023, I can only imagine what goes into such a large conference. The results were a safe space for all, a place I felt comfortable with regards to the COVID safety measures and excellent content. And I'm looking forward to 2024 in Pittsburgh. To the community and my moderation team for taking such excellent care of our community while I was out. It's utterly amazing and complete relief to be able to step away for any amount of time and know that everything will continue to be the same supportive, positive place as always. And finally, a group hug to all the folks I missed. Thank you, Katni. And you mentioned Pittsburgh. They did announce the dates. Uh, next. The next two years will be in May. It's like already on my calendar. I'll, I'll be there and... Anyway, I'm getting way ahead of myself. I'm excited. But for I'm now, I've, too, but I've, yeah. got, uh, I've got notes to read from some folks. So Keith, the EE, writes, Hug report for Ketney, Crayola, Jeff, Tectric for an awesome PyCon. It was wonderful meeting you, and it made my first in-person PyCon an absolute delight. To Ketney for an awesome presentation on the value of the aha moment and for leading the CircuitPython events. Those events now have my partner playing with CircuitPython. And finally, a hug report for everyone who attended PyCon and joined the community. If you're new here, welcome aboard. And a hug report for everyone again. This community is so lovely and fun. Next, hug reports from Maker Melissa. Uh, she has a hug for PT and Leda Ada for being very supportive during my move for the past couple of weeks. Uh, for Ketney, myself, Tectric, Keith the EE, and Crayola for attending PyCon this year. A hug to Katni for reading the Blinkist section today, and a group hug. Next, notes from Michael Pokusa, who has a hug report for Foamy Guy for testing a PR on Adafruit HTTP server that revealed some things revealed some things that I did not consider or test myself, and one for Jay Dimson for an issue on Adafruit HTTP server related to disabling serving static files. And the last text only in this block is Tammy Makes Things, who writes, A hug for Jepler Ketney and everyone else who represented the community at PyCon. One to Tectric for his awesome news, and a group hug. All right. And now we come to Scott, who uh, I believe will read notes. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Jeff. Hey. Um, 
<clears throat> first, just uh, echoing what a lot of other people have said. Uh, thank you to everyone who put the time and effort into um, PyCon and making that really seemingly successful. It was very cool to see an influx of people um, around sprints, and I know that open spaces, I'm sure, were also awesome. I definitely have a bit of FOMO <laughs> um, as somebody who's gone before. So uh, I'll figure it out. I'll go so at some point in the future. Uh, but thank you. You've done an awesome job. Uh, I'm really happy that, that we had folks there to, to have a, a CircuitPython presence. So thank you for taking the time and, and doing the work. And, and I know Foaming Guy wasn't there, but really supporting people on PRs is really helpful too. So uh, thanks to everybody around PyCon. Um, and then I just had a couple others. So for Retired Wizard and DCloud, just thank you to you two for testing the DBI tweak PR of mine. It's always uh, very nice to have people uh, kind of verify my code because it doesn't always work. And uh, both as, as DCloud and um, Toddbot gave me feedback on the DBI stuff. And it's going to make it better. So I really appreciate it. All right. Well, taking that. Um that feedback in a positive way is really a superpower too. So good job. All right. And to round out the section, I will read notes from uh, Tectric, who is not present today. Tectric has a hug report for all the fantastic people that I met at PyCon, particularly Katni Jepler, Crayola, and Keith the EE for another incredible PyCon experience. To Fummy Guy, Jose David, and all the other reviewers helping to get PyCon Sprint PRs checked and merged. Uh, one to my partner for all the love throughout the years. So excited for what's next for us. And finally, rounding out the whole section, a group hug. That wraps it up for hug reports. So let me tell you about the next section, which is status updates. It's time to let folks know what we're up to individually. I'll start and we'll go through the list in the document order. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. This is also an opportunity to provide quick tips and tricks relevant to what folks are working on. But if the discussion uh, becomes long, we will move it down to in the weeds. And with that, I will get started. Uh, I've been away for a few weeks, as I mentioned before. I vacationed in Utah, saw some lovely national parks, went on some hikes. It, medium hikes can, can be challenging or they can be just fine. It's, it's interesting. They seem to be defined a little bit differently everywhere. And after that, while in Utah, I figured I might as well attend PyCon. Uh, there were so many good things going on in the keynotes, talks, sprints, open spaces, and hallway track. Um, and a small write-up of our experience will be in the newsletter, so do check that out. And the totally unexpected thing, I had taken my gel nail kit because I wanted to have perfect blink of purple nails. I mentioned to someone in our, uh, I guess it was sprint day, in our sprints, that I'd be happy to show her how to do gel nails because she was new to it. I brought the stuff down. We went out in the hallway and like when all was said and done, I showed over a half a dozen people. We all sat and did our nails, discussed this and that. I met great people. It's totally unexpected fun. Uh, so now I guess we'll do PyCon Polish as an open space in 2024. I hope there are some locals who will bring their stuff because I uh, wouldn't want to bring my nail kit on the plane. Uh, and I did get in a little work while I was traveling. I've been working on improvements to Synthio to add ADSR envelope. And uh, I believe that is uh, close to, well, so John Park is gonna look at that, uh, maybe Liz will, and give me feedback on the API and then it'll go through review and hopefully that will get wrapped up soon. But this week I have received the order to quote, keep Synthon please. So I will get that finalized. Uh, I will uh, move next to allowing arbitrary frequencies instead of just MIDI notes. And then items beyond that, depending um, what I get done within the amount of time that makes sense, I'd like to add tremolo and vibrato. I'd like to add a different per note ADSR and waveform. And then kind of the final stretchy stretch would be to add some kind of frequency sweep. Although based on my experience with um, changing the note, uh, the note qualities, the waveform through just Python code that was running in my main loop, that may be enough to do a frequency sweep that sounds good. Um, I also need to dust off my 128 by 32 matrix portal setup, put current circuit Python on it and see whether it works. There is a forum user who has reported a problem with it that uh, we failed to diagnose as like a hardware problem. So it's time to test whether the software is still working. 
and I need to check guide feedback and update any guides accordingly. And I'm just going to add one more note here in real time that I need to check right channel output on Metro M7 just to make sure that stereo audio out is working when you use that PWM audio out. And my final other is a friend said, oh, there's an estate sale with cool computer stuff. Why don't you come? And I came home with a Xerox 820 computer system that uh, has a monitor, keyboard, and two massive 8-inch floppies, along with four boxes of floppy disks. Um, the computer itself was widely panned at the time of its introduction as being no better than any other Z80 machine, not nearly as mind-blowing as other Xerox computer products like the Alto, but still had an elevated price because of the Xerox name. And amazingly, it will boot from a floppy and give me a CPM prompt, and I'm looking for something useful to do with it. I've uh, got a post on my social about it if somebody cares to post that, paste that into the uh, Discord channel. And with that, let's hear what Dan is up to. All right. So uh, as people know, I released CircuitPython 810 Beta 2 uh, last Wednesday. I think it was Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. And um, on the show, on, the, on Show and Tell, I showed the Feather RP2040 Prop Maker, which is a product in progress and had a demo for that. Um, it's a nice all-in-one uh, thing. And I've started looking at um, Greg Nevarov's Async IO um, rework again, now that uh, things are hopefully winding down a tiny bit on 810. So I'll be looking at that and also working on 810 bugs. Okay. Thank you. Next up is DJ Devin 3. Hello. Uh, this week, I helped Andy Warburton beta test the unexpected maker Feather S2, ran about 25,000 transactions to Adafruit IO over four days without a single hard fault, uh, which should help close multiple bug reports lingering from 7.3.3 all the way up until uh, current stable release, 8.0.5. Um, and the UM Feather S2 Wi-Fi is now confirmed as stable, along with all of the Adafruit uh, S2 boards. Um, so no hard faults, awesome stuff. Also ran the same test on the Unexpected Maker Feather S3, which might close a couple more issues. So the UM Feather S2 and S3 Wi-Fi, MQT, and ITC are all considered stable now. And for Scott, who likes to keep issues down to one page, you can all you devs can now start looking and closing anything related to UM Feather S2 or S3 Wi-Fi issue. Uh, purchased a Radiolink 89S RC transmitter with a range of about a half a mile. The controller that comes with the little RC sewer tank bot that I'm playing with only has a range of about 20 feet. So I will be attempting to swap out the electronics in that for a much greater range. I'm not planning on playing with a two inch tank over half a mile it's just so i can get better signal through the pipes uh sewer pipes um and i just got some new motors in uh gear reduction one to 90 gear reduction to hopefully make it a really slow crawler because right now the thing is as fast as a little ferrari um so that's what i've been playing with this week is mostly uh, beta testing and uh, sewer tank all right, thank you. Next up is Foamy Guy. Right, uh, thanks, Jeff. Um, over the past week or so, I've been doing a lot of reviewing and testing uh, the influx of PRs. Uh, a lot of the new contributors worked on typing information, uh, but there were a few other fixes and improvements sprinkled in in other places as well. Uh, it was great to see all of those. Um, I did some more testing uh, for a, an older PR that was on the WizNet Ethernet library. Um, some updates to the internal logic inside of there um, that I have tested several times and are now good to go, and that's been merged. So that's uh, another uh, nice one to see get wrapped up. Um, I tried out the proposed new version of the HTTP server. Uh, I have in mind to go back and do a few additional examples, but I kind of put it through the, the basic paces, so to speak, um, and came away with a good, uh, a, a really good uh, feeling about uh, where that's headed. Um, I uh, just, I think uh, two or three days ago, I got the back in stock notice for the Feather uh, DVI. And I got one of those orders so I can get in on some of the HDMI fun uh, once that arrives here in a few more days. 
Um, outside of CircuitPython world, I've been working on a, a web-based application for my wife that will assist in authoring a, uh, an HTML file that she writes uh, content for regularly. Um, instead of digging through and coding HTML by hand, this tool will provide a form uh, within a web page where you can put your information into the form and click generate, and it will create all the HTML for you and let you download it. Um, the project uses the Flask web framework, uh, Jinja 2 for templating, uh, which is the same thing we use in Cookie Cutter, I believe, and then uh, Bulma for the front end. It's been a, a fun project to work on and uh, hopefully will be helpful to my wife. Um, and lastly, uh, upcoming for the next week, I have in mind uh, to try to expand the HT16K33 library to provide a non-blocking text marquee functionality. There's currently a marquee in there that will scroll some text for you, uh, but it's blocking. Um, you can either have it go infinite or just one loop, but either way it's blocking. And I have uh, in mind a plan to load up a feather tripler or quadrupler with a bunch of different wings and try to get them all interoperating. I don't have a, a specific need for this, but I think it sounds kind of fun. And the uh, 14 by four segments was one of the wings that I grabbed um, and noticed that it was currently blocking. So uh, that's what I've got on my plate for now. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I have notes from Jose David who uh, writes, reviewed some PRs, added the slider library to the community library and worked in the LPS 28 FDW pressure sensor for CircuitPython support. And that brings us back to Katni again. Hello again. So I'm back from PyCon. It was entirely brilliant. Um, I left home with approximately 70 Circuit Playground Expresses and 30 Circuit Playground Blue Fruits and came back with two Expresses and about 15 Blue Fruits, which is to say the open spaces were excellent and everyone was super into it. Oddly, Saturday was very quiet, but evidently the whole conference felt that way. Um, Friday was packed and Sunday was even more packed, uh, which usually it kind of starts with Friday and then narrows down each day, but that's not how it went. Uh, we hosted the most successful sprints since we've begun hosting them, uh, purely based on PR numbers. Um, I'm going to uh, look into getting some metrics put together there so that um, we have an idea, but I want to wait until the folks that are currently um, working on PRs are also uh, included and merged. Um, I was able to send both the open spaces and sprints folks home with hardware. Um, I had a bunch of feathers and a bunch of different sensors, and so during the sprints I asked uh, the folks that were interested uh, what they might want, what kind of project they might want to do, and sent them home with a Feather RP2040 and a sensor uh, that does the thing they're interested in, and a STEM EQT cable to connect them. Um, there's definitely a few things that could be approved upon for next year, but nothing serious. It was all small things that would make the experience smoother for the folks involved. Um, I created a list. Uh, it's, it's basically updating the, the, the quick start stuff we had to highlight the more important stuff on the page, for example, um, or having uh, better signage for the doors, stuff like that. Um, but overall, it was uh, probably the best we've ever done. And um, I definitely feel like we've kind of got the process nailed down at this point. It's just a matter of tweaking the small things. Um, I was able to uh, see a lot of friends that I haven't seen, uh, some since 2019. I was able to meet a bunch of new folks. Uh, that was excellent. And um, in terms of CircuitPython, I'm just amazed at how many people were, um, were interested in learning about it. Um, I ran a, a small workshop at the uh, Education Summit before the conference itself and had the, the Education Summit was not super highly attended and I probably had 15, 16 people who decided to uh, work with me over like a couple other options. So that was kind of cool. Um, separately, I am jumping into joining the organization team for Pi Ohio this year in a big way uh, with specific role details still to come, but I'm super excited. Uh, for this week, now that I'm back to work, um, the next thing on my list is finishing up the RFM 95 RP2040 guide. Got that started before I left and have that to, uh, to finish up now. Um, the Metro M7 guide needs details on the PWMIO page about uh, which pins actually work for PWMIO 
or audio or I have I have better notes somewhere else, but there's something about specific pins. Um, I'm going to be doing a guide on a canary nightlight, which if you are familiar with, um, they might be giants. It's came about because I had a birdhouse in your soul stuck in my head. Um, so I'm a little excited about this as well. And uh, I need to write up the code for it. Noah already um, modeled the 3D printed bird and it looks amazing. I have four guide updates to do, some of them small, some of them a little bit bigger, but those will be happening between other things. And then sometime soon, uh, I will be discussing details with uh, Tetric on updating the CI on the GitHub repository that contains all of the code embedded into Adafruit Learn Guides to shorten up the time and resources currently used by every PR. Um, at the moment, it builds everything every time, and it does catch things at times. So we came up with a solution that both shortens individual PR times uh, and still will catch the overall stuff um, that changes uh, in terms of mostly Arduino stuff. Will sometimes like a library or or something will change out from under us, and and so that'll fail on a specific uh, example, um, totally unrelated to the PR. So we will be handling that as well. And um, if you have any questions and want more information about PyCon, feel free to ask. There, I could go on for ages, but I won't. Um, and uh, just know that it was excellent, and um, I'm really glad that everyone was able to join us, and glad that I was able to attend. And that's what I've got. All right, thank you. All right, I have notes from a couple folks. So maker Melissa writes, for the last two weeks, got the code for a collaboration project with Aaron in a good place and successfully finished a big move from Oregon to Las Vegas. I worked on packing, loading and driving with between 12 and 18 hour days for a solid week and a half or so. This week we'll be catching up on email messages, issues and guide feedback adding some additional changes to the collab project based on feedback and lots of unpacking, getting services hooked up and finding things. Next up is notes from Tammy makes things who writes last week, completed the first round of design for a project I'm building for my nephew, an audio amplifier and oscillator board, which combined with a tiny oscilloscope from Amazon will enable him to make a map of sounds. This week, prototyping and testing the different submodules of my Map of Sounds project before I do the board design. Note, if there's anyone who's good with analog circuits and wouldn't mind looking over my schematic for obvious mistakes, please PM me. I'd appreciate another set of eyes. And of course, there is the uh, Help With channel for circuit board design, but uh, anyway. And finally, uh, Tammy's note. last note for this week is hopefully working on the design for an RP2040 build I'm designing to be base for music slash MIDI projects and other under, under the heading of other still struggling with health stuff, health stuff, but hopefully getting closer to a successful resolution. And that brings us back to uh, Tanut again. Thanks, Jeff. Um, okay. I've got a number of kind of things that are close, a uh, number of PRs that are close. I've got a PR out for supporting the IMX RT 1015, 1040 and 1050 in CircuitPython, and I also have a tiny UF2 review as well for that. <clears throat> I've got a couple library uh, PRs uh, for e-paper fixes for little Indian addressing. Um, they're waiting on reviews uh, as well. Um, Melissa, <laughs> hey, I pinged you on those, so hopefully you see those in your email. Um, I'm waiting on a review from you, Jeff, on uh, a PR not by me, but that I took over for frequency setting on the RP2040. Um, and I have a PR out that I just added Dan as a reviewer on for switching Pico DVI frame buffer to taking the frame buffer size in, not the signal output size. Um, I don't know if I talked about this, but this changes like the six... It used to always be 640 by 480 or 4, 800 by 480. Um, and if you gave it color, it would automatically divide it down. Now, with uh, if you give it color depths 8 or 16, you've got, <laughs> you've got to uh, provide the smaller 320 by 240 or 400 by 240 and, and hope that it allocates. <laughs> uh, do it early if you want to try to get it to allocate. Um, so as I'm wrapping this stuff up, um, I'm going to circle, circle back. I started a learn guide about porting the CircuitPython API to a new board and, and all the, the gotchas and check, like uh, kind of basic test programs that to run through that. So uh, I'm going to circle back 
with that, once all of my uh, pending stuff is kind of done on my side, uh, I'm, I'm going to probably start to by making a list of what modules I want to cover to complete it, um, because there is kind of a long tail of stuff. Uh, but I haven't done bus IO yet, so I'm going to have to do that. Um, and so that's kind of what I'm going to dive back into this week. And that's been kind of centered around verifying that the IMXRT port is uh, kind of working as we want it to and, and getting it to the stable point. So that's it for me. All right. And to round out uh, the section of status updates, I have some notes from Tectric, uh, who writes last week, reviewing PRs from PyCon. So excited to see all the issues closed this week with more in the works. And a second item that I'll just read exactly what it says here. Um, in the the uh, working notes document, there's a photo that won't make it to the final notes document. So take a look now. Um, after nearly four years of collaborative effort, I am excited to announce that my most extensive pull request was recently accepted. Maintainers are now discussing when the changes will be merged, but are thrilled with new feature additions. And there's a photograph of two people in there. So you can decide what that means for yourself. And anyway, Tech Trick, this week, catching up on things post PyCon, some new ideas for fixes and patches emerged during and since. So I'll be looking into those. And that wraps up status updates. Thank you, everyone. And there are no topics for In the Weeds today, which brings us to wrapping up the meeting. This has been the CircuitPython Weekly for May 1st, 2023. Thank you to everyone who participated. If you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. And if you're outside the US, there is a link to our official distributors at the bottom of the page. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be available on major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. You can visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. The next meeting will be held next Monday as usual at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. That will be on May 8th. Uh, the meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join by going to adafru.it slash discord. To be notified about the meeting and any changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. It's free. That's the only thing that we uh, mention you about. And there is no obligation, although we'd also love for you to come participate in the meetings. And with that, all I can see, all I can say is I hope to see y'all next week. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Well